I'm Zoe Delahunty Light, and after dying plenty of times myself, I've come up with a bunch of Project Zomboid combat tips that'll hopefully prevent your death at least once. I've already tried to keep you alive for as long as possible using my beginner's tips and mid-game advanced tips, which you can find on the Eurogamer channel, but ended up coming up with so many Project Zomboid combat tips that I thought, what the hell, might as well make an entire video dedicated to them. So for those of us who like to ditch sneaking and choose violence instead, here are 23 Project Zomboid combat tips. Let's keep it nice and simple to start with. Keep a secondary weapon on your belt in case, slash when, your main one breaks during combat. Shotgun blasts from all types of shotguns can be heard 100 tiles away making them the loudest weapons in the game. So I'd say only use them when you know you can make a quick escape, like if you have a car, for example, or if you're prepared for Zeds to come shambling towards you from all directions. If that doesn't dissuade you from using a shotgun, you should at least make sure that every shot counts. Be sure to get multiple enemies in range for each pull of your trigger as it'll waste less ammo and train your aiming skill far faster. Don't forget to turn on enemy outlines for all weapons, including melee ones, so you can make sure you always have enough Zeds in range. These enemy outlines should be on for melee combat as well as ranged. Outlines change from red to green depending on what your hit chance is like, and also gives an indication of what kind of range you need to effectively target Zeds. Some firearms are more effective if you fire at the target from distance, which usually scores an instant kill. Almost all of Project Zomboid's firearms aren't worth the fuss if you only shoot point blank, as they're just not great at close range. Picking either the Lumberjack or Firefighter class is ideal if you're looking to hone your axe combat. In particular, the Firefighter starts with military boots, which have full bite and scratch protection, meaning they're exceptionally good for crushing zombie skulls. In general, the quality of any pair of boots affects how effective they are at splintering, mauling, and generally caving in the heads of the undead. You don't always need to rely on weapons, melee, or ranged to take down zombies. A handful of molotovs thrown strategically into a compacted group of zeds will kill a horde. However, fire isn't really your friend as it can burn down houses and all that delicious loot inside, so I'd recommend using molotovs somewhere empty and open, such as a parking lot or while being followed by a line of the undead down a highway. Two-handed weapons hit way harder when you swing them at maximum reach instead of waiting till zombies are right up in your face. Swinging them with plenty of reach also helps to maintain the durability of your weapons. Do not move while you're shooting. It completely messes up your hit chance. Make sure to put some distance between you and zombies, then pause, aim, and shoot. Rinse and repeat. Shooting while you're still moving will drastically lessen the chances of any of those bullets actually hitting zombies, and considering the amount of noise guns make in the first place, you don't want any wasted shots. Before you start your next character, first of all, big condolences to your dead survivor, but secondly, build your character around a weapon. Pick a class or trait that gives you the best bonus for said weapon, so if you want to specialise in the easily breakable spear, then get anything that improves maintenance. Next, learn where your chosen type of weapon spawns, or how to craft them. Focus on levelling up your weapon skill and you'll stand a way better chance of surviving, as the best way to not get bit is to not let a zombie get anywhere near you, and the best way to stop a zombie getting anywhere near you is to kill them before it gets to that point. Spears are incredibly powerful if you put the time into learning how best to use them and improve your maintenance skill. Maintenance skills are essential as spears are very prone to breaking quickly, so you want to make sure you put points in maintenance as it reduces the likelihood of spears deteriorating when they're used. Spears are treasured among many because you can one-shot zeds with them, plus they have massive reach which not only means you get to keep zeds at a distance, but this huge reach is also very forgiving if you mess up an attack. This is the last point you need to know about spears. Charge with a spear by tapping Alt to sprint, 
Then hold the right mouse button and click the left mouse button to perform a charged attack. Charged spear attacks can take down Zeds with ease. When you're upgrading your clothing to shield yourself from those undead teeth, make sure to pay attention to the run and combat speed multipliers on each item. For example, the firefighter jacket has a 0.9 combat speed multiplier, so it means you swing your weapon a bit more slowly, which can get you killed. Unless you're planning on being a slow moving tank, run and combat speed is best to prioritize as the increased agility will help most when you're trying to flee or eliminate zombies with a bit less risk of getting swamped by them. While sprinting, tapping on space performs a power shove, which is guaranteed to push a Zed to the ground. The obvious next move is to follow up with a ground attack to stomp on and re-kill the felled Zed. Sometimes stomping a grounded Zed can be a bit fiddly, as you can instead shove a separate nearby Zed instead of attacking your intended target. Avoid this confusion by holding Alt and clicking the left mouse button, to force your character to attack the grounded zombie. Shoving with a firearm while standing is not a good idea. The animation for this move causes your character to stand still, which is absolutely deadly when a horde, or just a group of zombies, is closing in on you. Coax zombies through window frames to put them in a prone state and set them up for an easy head stomp execution. Keep to the side of the window and stomp them when they fall on the ground, but be careful though, as zombies have a chance to do a crawling attack if you're too close to a window or fence, which will cause your character to fall backwards. For those of you going for a melee build, pick the strong and fitness traits. Both these perks make you skilled with melee and fast, with fitness being important because, number one, you won't get exhausted during a fight, and therefore, number two, you can still run away should said fight get more intense than you want. Swinging heavier melee weapons like the lead pipe will exert your character more than lighter weapons, so having high fitness also lets you wield these heavier weapons. To be effective during combat, you want to make sure you're aiming beyond the zombie you've got your eye on, not on the zombie. Clicking directly on the zombie instead of beyond it incurs the risk of your character spinning around if the zombie gets too close to you, which means you could get bit, which means goodbye beloved survivor. For those of you with lower fitness, go for short blade stabbing weapons. They require a very low endurance to use, of it only being a 0.5% endurance modifier. This means they're ideal if you want to conserve stamina. If you've been with Project Zomboid for a while, you might find that you prefer the older style of combat. If you want to go back to it, then that's actually something you can do. It can be a little bit more forgiving, so to revert to this older build, go to Game Properties, then Betas, then type in with no gaps, legacy 40 dash classic, put in a space and then type zomboid. You can actually do charged attacks without sprinting by staying still, planting your feet by holding down the right mouse button and waiting a few moments, just like aiming with a gun. You do significantly more damage and these attacks use less endurance. To give yourself an extra helping hand, remember you can increase the visibility of the reticule if you need to, as it can be easy to lose track of it in the middle of a fight. Another pointer is that you can also limit exactly how far the cursor is able to move from you when a zombie is within a certain distance, so the camera doesn't go panning off while you're trying to kill something. Finally, there is absolutely no shame in tweaking the zombie settings to reduce how many spawn and how fast they move. This will help you practice combat and get used to zombies attacks, then you can put it back to normal later on once you've got a handle on putting those undead down for good. Good luck. That's 23 Project Zomboid combat tips. Do you have any other combat tips that you think are helpful for those trying to survive in Project Zomboid? Let me know in the comments below. I have two VODs of my previous Project Zomboid streams on the Eurogamer channel if you want to check them out, plus two other videos with pointers for Project Zomboids which you can find on the channel, with one suited for beginners and the other for those who have spent a fair amount of time in the game and are looking for some more advanced tips. If you enjoyed the video, thanks very much and don't forget to like and subscribe to Eurogamer as we have a new video out every single day. Now I'm going to go and, surprise surprise, practice killing zombies, so I'll see you next time.